guys in this brief video we are going to take a look at some interesting uh, chart development techniques that you might be finding useful for your studies or for example when you want to present any analytical report uh, so have a quick look uh, what my methods are and hopefully you will find this small strategy useful okay uh, to start with in our hypothetical example we would like to make a small uh, chart about countries and uh, certain economic indicators if you are having such a case the first thing to do is that i'm usually suggesting the world bank world development indicators so this is what uh, i'm talking about you go to the data.worldbank.org and uh, here we have some immense amount of information available in the field of economic, social, and some other indicators. Uh, we can use either the toolbar here if we know exactly what data we are looking for, or you can just scroll down and go to the data bank or the world development indicators and you will be seeing the entire uh, spectrum of data. But in this case, we already know which type of uh, indicator we would be exploring. So I want to check uh, the economic growth of certain countries. So I'm typing GDP growth into this small toolbar and it's already making a few suggestions. You must be careful because uh, you need to know which exactly is the one gross data that would be useful for you. In our case, it's the usual annual uh, GDP growth rate. I'm clicking on that and what is happening is that the World Bank is automatically creating a line chart for us Hopefully it works. Yeah, here we go. It starts from the 1960s until nowadays, so quite a long timeline might be observable here. And automatically it is showing us the entire world economy, okay? So we can see all the ups and downs. We can see this crazy fluctuation in itself. It's interesting, but this is not the aim of today's video. You can also make sure that the timeline is a bit shorter if you want to focus on some recent years, okay? But uh, in this case, uh, if you are just trying to explore the toolbar automatically, let's take a look at some individual countries. The United States, for example. I'm selecting it from the suggestions and here I might be taking a look at the United States. I might also be comparing it with the United Kingdom. Why not? So you can add a few countries at the same time. And in this case, the toolbar is automatically separating them by different colors. You can also play with the timeline. So that's quite a good uh, analytical tool if you don't want to bother with Excel. At the end, if you are ready with it, you are just doing a regular print screen and inserting into your PowerPoint presentation or Word document. It's up to you. In this case, I want to work with raw data. So I'm uh, deleting all countries because I want to download the whole set of economies here. I'm going to the download section on the right hand side and choosing the Excel export method because that would be probably the most useful. I'm saving it to my computer and then I'm going to open it to be able to work with raw data because that toolbar is pretty good but you cannot really uh, make any modification there. So perfect, here we go. Let's take a look at our Excel techniques of creating graphs and how to make sure that our data are really, really uh, useful for our analytical work. What you see is we are having three small windows here. The data is obviously containing all the raw information about all the countries and some regions of the world. So it's quite useful. The indicator is the same. And the timeline starts from 1961, as I said, up until nowadays. You also have a metadata information where you can check some extra data uh, related info, for example, about the country group, the table name and so on and so on. But what is uh, really important here is uh, the definition itself. So let's assume you are doing your project work and you want to share with your valuators the exact definition which is behind your calculations. OK, the World Bank is always giving us that concept which had been previously created by the World Bank uh, Action Group, for example. So it's quite useful. You can copy it and make a reference, of course, at the end. But we are going back to our data uh, area and by creating a new sheet, 
I want to make a comparison between Italy and Spain, okay? Since we have so many individual countries, I'm using the Ctrl F option by finding all the relevant data about the Italian economy. Okay, here we go, starting from 1961. And I am making a copy of those data because I want to insert them to the new sheet that I have already prepared for myself. Okay, I'm making a copy of it and this is my Italian database. This is Italy. The next one would be Spain. I'm making just two countries today to make it as clear as possible. Again, using the Ctrl F, I'm typing Spain into the toolbar and here we go. Again, starting from 1961, I'm copying the entire database here regarding that one selected country. Okay, not running across. And this is our full set of data. One thing is left, the timeline is really important, so never forget to add years. Excel is obviously helping us with some automatic options, so I'm just typing the first two years and then extending that until the end. Our final year should be in 2019, as I said. Perfect, quite a long database here. Okay, uh, what I want to do is highlighting all of the information I have already co uh, collected about the two countries and the timeline I have just added. And I'm going to the insert file of my Excel. I want to insert a chart. So here we have this recommended chart option. It works quite okay. In most cases, it is I would say even perfectly able to suggest us the best option. I am selecting the small timeline because we are having just two individual countries that we are comparing. However, the timeline is really a long one, so there would be no point in making some individual uh, charts which vary from year to year. I want to be able to view them in a connected line. So this is our perfect uh, chart here about the two economies. I'm usually making them bigger and the first thing to do, I'm setting my own preferences, so I hate Calibri, okay? Uh, it is just bothering me, okay? Now I see the two economies, they are separated by two different colors and I would really love to change a bit the design of that. If using your right button, you can click on the format axis here and obviously you might be seeing some possibilities. I'm going to this section and I want to custom the angle of the years so they would be looking a bit more sophisticated. Okay, so remember this small button here and to custom angle. Minus 45 degrees is adding me this extra feature and uh, it is not bothering the lines that I would like to individually take a look at. Okay, so this is the first thing here. Another important information is that I want to give names to my accent says. Mm -hmm. I am double clicking at my chart and uh, I would like to add a chart element here. We are talking about axis titles in this case and I want to add a vertical one. So this is the primary vertical. And I just want to highlight here that it is percentage. So we must be super accurate with our database related charts because in this case it's quite obvious that we are talking about the timeline so years are visual, visual here but we also want to make sure that these data are here percentages okay perfect uh, what's next I want to make sure this vertical X a bit smaller because it might be bothering us a bit okay perfect uh, let's custom a bit the timeline as well now it's perfect I'm jumping to the countries. Spain, Spain is obviously the orange one, but I'm going to change the color of that. Let's not make Spain that orange, but I'd rather choose this reddish color and it's too thick for me, so I might modify its thickness as well. So I would like to choose some spots instead of uh, the perfect line to be able to distinguish the two economies here and about Italy I'm just doing the same according to my association Italy is also having its own color it might be blue but a bit um, lighter and also we can play with the thickness as well 
it might be a bit thicker. Again, I'm not happy with that, so selecting a bit darker blue, okay? This is probably similar to the original one, so you can play with them as you wish. And now we are having some pretty good individual lines about the two countries. You can add your chart title here. This is the real GDP growth rate in percentages, so we want to be pretty, pretty uh, punctual about our set of data. And also, uh, if you are sophisticated enough and you don't like this white background of the chart, you might be changing that as well uh, by using the different possibilities here. OK, so it's definitely up to you. In some cases, Excel is also allowing us some preset uh, solutions to be applied here. It's up to you, obviously. Uh, and at the end, when you feel that you are more or less ready with your chart, you might be making a copy of that. The best is to make a print screen and insert it in this way into your Word document because it's not going to fall apart. People are having different words, different offices on their laptop and they might be um, falling apart the final results that we are creating. So this is why I make rather a print screen. It will never fall apart. And also because it's quite a big one that we have created, it will also be pixeled enough. So you don't have to worry about uh, not being, for example, a high quality related person. Uh, a mistake that many people do, they find some graph on the internet, they find it in a PDF file and they are just cutting out that. The result, when you insert it into a Word document, it will be really, really a pixeled one. It will be even grayish when you then hit the PDF button, creator. So this is what I am definitely not recommending for anyone. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed this video and let's uh, use Excel in a very basic way. However, this really, I would even say, super basic method just helps to add something extra to any report you have to prepare, either for your studies or for your work. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and give a like if you would like to see something similar in the future. Goodbye.